All right, what's going on, Faithful Ministry? What's going on, y'all? So today I'm just coming with a little YouTube video, and no, I know it's a little different. I usually do a live stream, you know, but this week we're gonna take a little break, do a little YouTube video. We're gonna be back next week for the Wednesday night Bible studies at six o'clock. But this week, you know, I just want everyone to be encouraged. There's so much going on in the world, so much different stuff happening, all this COVID and all these different things going around in the world, the different countries and, you know, Christian persecution, you know, all this stuff that's happening. I just want everyone to be encouraged, you know, and just to have faith, faith in God that whatever's happening, he's going to bring us out. So that's the topic today is to be encouraged. So I hope y'all got your Bibles with you. You know, we all got Bibles on our phone, on a computer, handheld Bible, whatever. Just grab your Bible and let's dive so right We're going to start off first in Joshua 1, uh, 7 through 9. So Joshua 1, 7 through 9. That's all go there. And it reads, Be strong and very courageous. Be careful to obey all the law my servant Moses gave you. Do not turn from it to the right or to the left, that you may be successful wherever you go. Do not let this book of the law depart from your mouth. Meditate on it day and night, so that you may be careful to do everything written in it. Then you will be prosperous and successful. Have I not commanded you? Be strong and courageous. Do not be terrified. Do not be discouraged. For the Lord your God will be with you wherever you go. Be strong and courageous, right? Is what this Bible verse is saying. And it says to be careful to obey the law my servant Moses gave you. So then, you know, they had the law of Moses. But now we have, you know, the law of Christ, which is to love God with your heart, soul, and mind, and to love your neighbor as yourself. So we can, you know, apply it to ourselves now. So basically to obey that law that Christ has given us, right? And do not turn from it right or left, but basically keep straight on it. And so that you may be successful wherever you go. It says, do not let the book of the law depart from your mouth. Meditate on it day and night, so that you may be careful to do everything written in it. Book of the law, this could be the Bible, right? You know, they had a different book of the law then. This is in the Old Testament. But now, saying to meditate, basically meditate on the word of God, so that you are able to do what it tells you to do, so that you are careful to do what is written in it. And it says, then you will be prosperous and successful. He says, have I not commanded you? Be strong and courageous. Do not be terrified. Do not be discouraged. For the Lord your God will be with you wherever you go. And this is the Lord specifically speaking to Joshua, right? And the Lord is saying, I'm, I'm with you. Wherever you go, wherever you're at, I'm with you. So don't be discouraged. Don't be, don't be fearful or anything like that, right? The Bible says that God did not give us a spirit of fear, but of power, love, and a sound mind. He's always with us. So don't be discouraged, but be encouraged that God is always with us. And that brings me over to Romans 8, 28. So let's all turn to Romans 8, 28 in our Bibles. And it reads, And we know that in all things, God works for the good of those who love him, who have been called according to his purpose. So let's break this down. It's saying that we know in all things, God works for the good of those who love him. How do we know that we love God? Well, the Bible says that if you love me, this is Jesus speaking, saying, if you love me, keep my commands. What are the commands that I went over earlier? To love God with your heart, soul, and mind, and to love your neighbor as yourself. When you, when you practice that, that means that you're showing love to God. And it says that, that it works for the good of those who love him, right? Who have been called according to his purpose. We all have a purpose. If you're breathing on this earth, if you're still here living, God has a purpose for you. You just have to accept that purpose. Everything with God comes with acceptance. You have to accept God into your heart, accept the salvation that God has given you, and accept the purpose that God has given to you. God is a gentleman. You know, he's not going to come in, bum rush your door down and say, hey, I'm God, come on. Nah, he's going to let you choose him. He wants you to choose him because love by definition is choice, right? And it says that he recalled to his purpose. So when you accept Christ and you accept the purpose that he has for you, it will work for the good of those who love him. 
Now I want to go over to Philippians 4, 6 through 7. So let's all go over to Philippians 4, 6 through 7. You know, I'm just bringing a whole bunch of scriptures just to really have you encouraged. I'll have these scriptures down in the description below for you guys to go back and look at. So I want to go to Philippians 4. And actually, I'll start in verse 4. Let's go to 4 through 7. And it says, this is the Apostle Paul speaking. It says, Rejoice in the Lord always. I will say it again, rejoice. Let your gentleness be evident to all. The Lord is near. Do not be anxious about anything, but in everything, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your request to God. And the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. So let's break this down. Verse 4 it says, Rejoice in the Lord always always it says again rejoice always have joy when you go into the lord rejoice in the lord right that's what he says and says let your gentleness be evident to all be gentle right be gentle to one another because the lord is near and it's my favorite part it says do not be anxious about anything but in everything with petition which is to which is to have your request right petition is to make the request right you're having your request and then with thanksgiving you're presenting your request to god so you make your request then you present it your request may be okay lord i need help with getting this job that's your petition now you present it to the lord lord help me get my job and with thanksgiving saying lord i thank you i thank you even though i may be out of a job i'm still thanking you right just like that uh the song praise him in advance by marvin Sapp saying i'm praising god in advance i'm praising him in the ups and the downs right i'm thanking him for it all right so that's what we must do with thanksgiving it says to be with thanksgiving to present your request to god and in verse 7 it says in the peace of god which transcends all understanding will guard your heart and mind in christ jesus our lord right he's going to send his peace that surpasses all understanding, that transcends all understanding. So when you present your request to God, in return, he gives you peace about it. And you're like, okay, Lord, I understand. You're giving me peace about this job, I know I'm gonna get it. Or the Lord may tell you to, to go in a different direction, but he'll still give you that peace. You'll be like, okay, so this job isn't for me, but you're leading me in this way, Holy Spirit, but you're still giving me peace. Even though, I'm, even though you're leading me in a different direction, you're still giving me peace. The Lord will always give you peace. So whatever you're going through, whatever is on your mind, whatever is challenging you, right? Always pray. Whenever the enemy is just trying to attack and attack and attack, always pray and give it up to God. And he will give you peace about your situation. So I want to go over to Matthew eleven twenty-eight 28 through 30. So let's all go to Matthew eleven twenty-eight 28 through 30. And it reads, this is Jesus speaking. Come to me, all you who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am in, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. The Lord wants to give you rest. He says, come to me, all who are weary and burdened, right? And it says, I will give you rest. If you have burdens upon your shoulder, all this emotional baggage, all these things that you're holding on to, the Lord is saying, give it to me. Give it to me. And I will give you rest. Right. He says, take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart and you will find rest for your soul. Take upon the yoke of the Lord. And it's basically this wooden thing that goes across animals, right? So that they're walking in unity. When, you, when it means to be equally yoked, it means you're walking in unity. You're walking in the same direction. When the, when the Lord is saying, take my yoke upon you and learn from me, meaning walk in unity with me, right? And learn from me. We're walking together. So if the yoke is off, if one side is higher than the other or one side is you know, further, further than the other, then the yoke is going to be off. That's unequally yoked. You guys aren't walking in unity. That's why the Bible says to be equally yoked right? Or do not be unequally yoked, right? When it comes to having a husband or a wife, you have to be equally yoked. You're walking in unity, meaning you guys are lining up with one another, all right? And the Lord says, learn from me. And he says, and you will find rest for your soul if you take my yoke, right? 
But verse 30 says, for my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Give your burdens to the Lord. Cast all that on the Lord. The Bible says to cast all your fears, anxieties, your fear and anxieties onto him because he cares for you, right? All your, all your burdens, give it to the Lord. Take it off your back and give it to the Lord. And put on the, the burden of the Lord, which is light. And get equally yoked with the Lord, meaning walking with him in unity. Right? And don't take the burden back. See, a lot of people be, will say, you know, okay, Lord, uh, I, I continue to give my, my burdens to you. I continue to pray about this thing, but but it, it seems to always come back. It's because you're taking it back. This should only be a one-time deal. You give your burden to the Lord. Lord, take it and deal with it. And that's it. Don't Don't let it come back into your life. Don't let it continue to affect you. When you've already prayed it to the Lord and you put it at his feet, it stays there. And he will take care of it. So now you give your request up to God. You give all your burdens onto him and he will give you his burdens and his yoke. All right. And I want to move on to the last Bible verse back to Romans chapter eight. And we're going to be in verse 37 through 39. So Romans chapter eight, verse 37 through 39. This will be our last Bible verse and the apostle Paul is speaking. So it starts off saying, no, it says in all of these things, we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. For I am convinced that neither death nor life, neither angels nor demons, neither the present nor the future, nor any powers, neither height nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus our Lord. So let's break this down, verse 37. It says, in all these things, we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. Or more than conquerors when you're walking with christ you are a conqueror you can take over you can take over the enemy the enemy doesn't have no power over you you are more than a conqueror through christ who loved us and who loves us right we have that ability to to cast out demons and to heal the sick and raise the dead we're more than conquerors we can conquer these things through christ jesus apostle paul goes on to say in verse 38 he says for i'm convinced that neither death nor life neither angels nor demons, neither the present nor the future, nor any powers, neither height nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus our Lord. If you're ever feeling separated from the Lord, if you're ever feeling like you're not so close to the Lord, if you feel like maybe you've been messing up a little bit, maybe you've been in a sin cycle, maybe you haven't been reading your Bible, maybe you don't have motivation to read your Bible, Maybe you starting to maybe fear is starting to set in on you. Remember that we are more than conquerors. We can conquer that fear. We can conquer that sin cycle. We can conquer these things that, that the enemy will try to throw at us. And then, then the Apostle Paul is saying that he's convinced. He's convinced, meaning that he knows for sure that nothing in all creation, depth nor height, angels or demons, past or future, none of that stuff can keep us from the love of God. None of that stuff can keep us from him. So God loves us so much that nothing in all creation can keep us from him. So whenever you're feeling down or sad or worried about anything, remember to pray, right? The Bible says to present your request to God and the peace that transcends all understanding will, will guard your hearts and have courage. The Bible says to be strong and courageous, right? And to meditate on this word daily so that you are careful to do what it tells you to do, right? Make sure that you're always in your Bible and you're always praying and you're always fasting too. Make sure that you that you put in fasting because the Bible says when you fast. It doesn't say if you fast. It says when you fast, meaning that, that it's expected of you to fast, right? So that you're starving your flesh, keeping those fleshly desires out of the way so that you can walk in the spirit, walk in the spirit. All right, Faithful Ministry, I hope all of you guys are encouraged. I hope this was an encouraging message for all of you guys. Remember to always pray, always seek God about everything, anything and everything. The Lord loves you. He is always with you guys. So I hope this was an encouraging message for you all. And we'll be back next week with another Bible study. So make sure that you are there on the Discord. You know, always just hit me up if you need the invite. Or, you know, if you watch this on YouTube, then 
comment down below if you want to join and I'll have the and I'll put the invite in there for you and I'll send it over to you and you can join the discord I might just put it in the description below at the invite so that you all can join over and come back on every Wednesday at six o'clock for Bible study so thank you all for watching this video hope you enjoyed it and I'll see y'all later